Hey guys, um, I'm here today to do my weekly wrap up uh, a day late, gosh, because uh, yesterday was the 24 and 48, and when that was done, I was just like a disaster. I slept quite a bit, and I did work during the period, um, so anyways, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, so I have wrap up and then diversathon TBR type situation, and then I have more hedgehog goodies at the end because I uh, didn't show them off last week. And um, I also wanted to say super hardcore thank you to everyone who's like posting comments on my last video. You guys are so sweet. Um, I haven't gone back and responded to them, but hopefully I'll be able to do that later today or tomorrow. Um, but I like get email notifications when I get comments and um, you guys are like seriously too nice. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I never say thank you. Oh, or I don't say it enough. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> I am going to first talk about the only book that I finished like during the week before the readathon started, um, which is just Heidi. I finished Heidi uh, by Joanna Speary, and this is translated by Eileen Hall. Um, I am going to do, I think, a book talk about this book. I did one, but I don't really like it, so I'm going to do another one, and then I'm going to post it, hopefully. We'll see. Um, and so then the readathon happened, and I finished, I started and finished, um, Ghosts by, um, Cesar Aida, um, which is translated by Chris Andrews. Um, uh, I picked this up as a buddy read with, um, Nicola from Robotnik. She finished it before I even, like, really got into it, because it's a very, it's a very tiny book, and there's no, um, there's no chapter breaks or anything, so it's definitely, like, you have to sit down and just, like, kind of go for it, so I did that on Saturday when I got home from work uh, for the 24 and 48. And I also wanted to say that this is for, um, I read this for the, the, around the, I do so many challenges, <laughs> Around the World in 52 Books Challenge, and it was um, a book I meant to read in 2016, because uh, me and Nicola meant to buddy read this in like October, I think, or November, and then it kept um, getting pushed back. So uh, yes, that is this. And I really enjoyed this. Um, I don't really know what happened, per se. We're following, um, we're in Argentina, Argen, Ar, Argentina, Argentina, we're in Argentina, what is wrong with me? Um, and we've got at like a condominium or a housing project that's being built. Um, it's a seven floors and it's like super fancy and da da da. Um, but it's the last day of the year and it was supposed to be when this construction was supposed to be finished, but it's not finished yet. And so there's like a caretaker family that's living on the premises, like making sure that everything, you know. It says, I think, in the description somewhere that they're squatters, but, like, the people who own the place know that they're there. They're, they're, they're there making sure everything's okay. Um, and so they're from Chile, and I just thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was super interesting. There's a lot of, like, comparisons between Chileans and Argentinians, and it makes me, like, curious, because um, I don't know. I can tell... Um, like when someone's speaking and they're from Argentina, I can tell based on their accent that they are from Argentina, but I feel like that's the only accent that I really like can, um, you know, pick out besides, uh, from Spain. And, um, I don't know. I'm just like very curious, especially because I read that other book that was, um, a Chilean author. I think it was Chilean, um, at the end of last year. So I just want to like learn more about South America in general. Um, this is a very kind of like weird book. You don't really know, like, what's happening. There are ghosts, and it's, like, the end-of-the-year party, and it's strange. I gave it four to five stars. I really liked it. I definitely wouldn't just, like, go around recommending this to everybody, though. I feel like it's a very particular type of book. Um, and then, also, for the readathon, I put a little bit more of a dent in this. My goal was to read one short story a day, which I'm obviously failing at. Um, I did read, I think, like, five or six of them during the readathon, let me see, uh, I read, uh, my first ever Neil Gaiman short story, um, or anything by Neil Gaiman, which was Closing Time, which I, I think was my favorite of the ones that I just recently read, um, otherwise Pandemonium by Nick Hornby was actually really good too, um, I did not like Stephen King's, it was The Tale of Grey Dick, they talk about the gunslinger in it, so I don't know if it's, like, part of the gunslinger series or whatever, but I don't know, it felt kind of like he was trying a little bit too hard, it felt like it took place in, like, modern day or, like, recent modern day, and they used a lot of, like, the and stuff. It was very, I didn't really like that very much. 
Um, and yeah, so I feel like the nail game and closing time was my favorite of the, I read a handful of these and so yes. And then I finally finished Fast Food Nation by Eric Schlosser. Um, I am going to do a book talk about this too. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that though because I feel like there's so much to say. I can't physically do it in one video. Um, if you haven't read this book and you are interested in what you consume and how human beings are treated in this country, the United States of America, I feel like they go into like a little bit of global type stuff, but I feel like in other countries it's not as bad <laughs> as it is here, especially like other, you know, um, like industrialized, like Europe and stuff. Like it's, I, I it, like it's disgusting how we treat our workers. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. I'm, I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to do a book talk about it, but be prepared for me to probably go on multiple rants because I hate greed. <laughs> Perfect. And also for 24 and 40, I started Infinite Chest by David Foster Wallace. Um, I'm loving this. I'm loving this so much. I'm buddy reading this with Tanya from List Obsessed Reader. It's on the 30 books read before you turn 30 list, which we're both we're both, I'm turning 30 at the end of this year and she's turning 30 at the very beginning of next year. So we've got this one last year. So we're trying to read um, the rest of the books on the list. And I am seriously loving this so much. I'm only like 60 pages into the book. Um, but it is incredible. I don't know why, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I, I, I actually have, I literally have no idea what this book is. I still don't really know what it is. Um, but you know, I don't like to know about the books that I'm reading before I read them. So I just kind of, I just know that this is a book that, you know, everyone should at least try. And yeah, I am, I'm loving it. The thing is, <laughs> so usually when I'm reading a big chunky book like this, although I've started a lot of them and haven't finished them. Um, my goal is always like, oh, I'm going to read 25 pages a day or oh, I'm going to read 50 pages a day. So with this one instead, what I'm doing is I'm saying that I'm going to read at least 30 minutes of it a day. Um, goal is an hour, but at least 30 minutes of it a day. I feel like putting a page count on it is so stressful because then it's like, oh, I didn't, you know, read the 30 pages today. So that means that today or tomorrow I have to read, you know, 45 pages. And so it like kind of keeps snowballing like that for me and it causes a lot of anxiety. So I'm just putting like a time limit because uh, these pages are uh, quite big and there's a lot of text on them. And yeah, it's like a very, like, it's just a very large book. So um, I'm putting time limits on my reading for this instead. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to, my, would like to finish it by the end of February, probably by the end of March. We'll see what happens. This is the big book that I'm going to focus on so that means I'm putting everything else further on a back burner but life happens um and so then I have some picks for that that's all I did for the <laughs> the 24 and 48 I read a total of 12 hours and 45 minutes and 456 pages which comes out to about 35 pages an hour which I feel like is kind of low um but you know I think the last time that I did a readathon my um average page count was like 45 or 50 pages an hour. Um, I didn't read any graphic novels though and Infinite Jest does have very large pages and then I was reading nonfiction so I don't know. It depends, you know what I'm saying? Uh, different reading takes longer to do but I'm I'm very happy with all of my progress. But, um, so I do have some picks for the Diversathon Readathon which started yesterday and I started uh, Bad Feminist last night right before I went to bed by Roxanne Gay. Uh, so this is one of my picks for it. And um, yeah, I am excited. I finally am reading this. I only read the first the first essay yesterday, which is Feel Me, See Me, Hear Me, Reach Me, which I actually I, I loved a lot, um, mostly because it reminded me of the TV show Girlfriends. Um, I was a big, big UPN fan back in the day before the WB consumed it, and um, Girlfriends was one of my favorite shows. I loved it so much, and so now I'm kind of like, hmm, kind of want to go like buy that on DVD or something and just start forcing Jake to watch it with me. Um, I don't know why when I was a kid, I really was into shows about, you know, people in their 30s. I guess everyone was because like Friends and Seinfeld, but Girlfriends was top-notch programming. So um, I'm pumped to try to watch that again. And yeah, I'm very, very excited. And it's making me kind of sad 
a little bit, but it, it's, I feel like, important, and hopefully I will learn a lot from reading this. Um, and then I have two other picks, so we'll see. So this one I'm going to like be reading throughout the week, and then of these two, I'm going to read one first and then read the other. I'm not going to be simultaneously reading tons of things because I'm already kind of getting stressed out talking about all these books. Um, but the first one is Chronicle of a Last Summer um, by Yasmin El Rashidi, and I don't know if this is translated. I don't think so. Yeah, no. Okay, perfect. It's not translated. Um, yeah, so this is a novel about Egypt by, I'm going to assume an Egyptian. It says she lives in Cairo, so I'm going to assume she is Egyptian. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a very slim one, and hopefully I will read that quickly. And then the next one that I have is The Feast of the Goat by um, Mario Vargas Llosa. And this is translated from Spanish by Edith Grossman, and this takes place in the Dominican Republic. He is not a Dominican author. He is, I don't know where he's from. So this is technically, I guess, not an Own Voices book. But, you know, stuff happens. It's close. It's not, um, where is he from? He lives in London. He's from Peru. Yeah, Peru and the Dominican Republic ain't the same thing, but... That's okay. Um, so he's from Peru. This takes place in the Dominican Republic kind of around the time that Trujillo is in power. And I'm so, so, so excited to read this. Um, I feel like this is kind of cheating too because I am Dominican, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and then, so th those are my three picks for the Diversathon or Readathon. Um, I feel like I have to read about 150 pages a day in order to complete all three of these, which is very unlikely because that's like at least three hours of reading a day. I always have very high hopes and ambitions, and if I have time, I do, I need to finish um, Black Boy by Richard Wright, so that's like, maybe I should just, no, well, I'll, this is other goal. I need to finish this book. I'm pathetic right now. And then one last book. Oh, I did want to mention that I didn't even start or touch The Age of Reason by John Paul uh, Salt, Salt last week. Um, I'm putting that back on my bookshelf. You're probably going to see it very, very soon, though. Um, and then I have one more book, which is The Trial by Franz Kafka. I've never read any Franz Kafka, and um, I know it's like a white man, whatever. Um, this is not for diversity. This is for the Around the World in the... 52 books challenge. It's um, a title that doesn't contain the letter E. So the trial does not contain the letter E. And this is translated by Breon Mitchell. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to get as many translated things under my belt as possible. So those are all the books. Overwhelming? What do you think? Mm, I think kind of. Um, let's finish it off with some hedgehog goodies because that will make everybody happy. So I just wanted to mention some more things that I got for Christmas that I forgot to mention before. Um, I got this cute, adorable little sticker that says hedgehogs. I don't know where to put it though because it's so cute and once I put it somewhere I won't be able to get it back and I, uh, I just love it so much. And then this is the other t-shirt that Jake's mom got me. I think this is all the same, um, the same artist. Um, but it's got the anatomy of a hedgehog, and so it has all the cute uh, slug sniffer. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, velveteen tum. Uh, so cute. So, yes, I'm not wearing it right now because it's a little tight, and I want to be like, oh, hey, guys. Um, but, yeah. And then uh, I also have these two adorable uh, calendars that I actually I need to break out of their packaging. This one's got, like, real-life pictures of hedgehogs. Oh my gosh, there's a hedgehog with a bunny! Oh, oh, oh god. Okay, and then this one is like little drawings of hedgehogs, so I need to find the place to, this one feels like, um, it's got like a stand, so it's kind of like a, a desk calendar. I don't have a desk, but maybe I can put it on my bookshelf somewhere, and then this one I will hang up. <laughs> Look at that. And then one last thing that Jake got me, They're so cute! Oh gosh. Okay, so that's finally the end of the video. Sorry, this is so long. Uh, let me know what you accomplished for 24 and 48. I'm super excited. Um, I feel like Twitter is kind of difficult because, you know, if you're gone from Twitter for a little bit of time and you come back, you, you know, you miss a bunch of stuff. So it's a little difficult for me. Oh, also, 
which I never say, but I'll leave links to my Twitter and my Goodreads and stuff below, so you can go check that out. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's having a great week, and happy Diversathon! Ooh.